Okay, welcome to the next part of the pump up uh, for um, these quantities associated with electricity. In this case right here, what we're doing is uh, uh, we're going to go on. We've talked about electric force and electric field, and now we want to concentrate on the electric potential energy U for point charges. Now, we had talked about in class that this idea of electric potential energy has a lot to do with, it's related to this concept of the work done on the charge, or on the system, really, to change its configuration. In other words, in this example right here, if I took a charge from one location and tried to move it closer to another charge, and they were like charges, it's pretty clear that I'm going to have to be doing work on the system as I do that. If I'm doing work on the system, basically adding energy into the system that I can later release, then I must be increasing the potential energy of the system. Now in this system right here, you can see that if I'm having to do that, I'm having to, I would be having to apply some kind of force myself through some sort of a displacement, uh, delta x, in this direction like this, to be able to get this um, uh, particle moved closer to the other particle. And that's the basic, I, that's our basic idea of electric potential energy. The only problem is, whereas this calculation of a force times a displacement works really nicely when you have a uniform field, in this case, you should see that my force will not be constant as I get closer and closer and closer and closer to this other charge. In other words, as I move the, we'll call this charge one and charge two. As I move charge two closer and closer and closer, the force increases, which means I can't do a simple calculation to figure out this work. So if I can't do a simple calculation, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rely on the calculation somebody basically else made associated with the um, calculus of this situation and give the relationship for this um, electric potential energy, U sub E. Um, and that's given on your equation sheet as K, Q1, Q2, divided by R, where R is the distance between the centers of the objects, kind of the same sort of a thing that we've been dealing with uh, before. So that's our, that would be our R. Now you can kind of see here that there's a preset sort of a um, uh, zero point associated with this. I told you with these two positively charged particles, I would be increasing in potential energy as I got them closer and closer. If I were to release it, and this particle too, when zooming off to the left, it would be losing potential energy, giving it up for kinetic energy. And when it got like an infinite distance away, let's say, from my other charge, you could kind of see here that this number would become some kind of an infinite number. And if I divide by an infinite number, I get something, um, in this case, equal to zero, really small number. So you can kind of the, the, the um, convention associated with electric potential energy is that infinitely far away, when the two particles are completely separated, they have no electric potential energy between the two of them. Now, by, before I move on to more complicated situation, I'd like to point out here that oftentimes when you're dealing with uh, electric potential energy, you want to know not just the value for it, but you want to know some kind of a you'd actually like to know some sort of a dif difference between the two. In other words, I'd like to know the difference between the potential energy of the particle when I had it my radius i away, my initial radius, to my radius final, something like this, my final radius. In other words, I'd be interested in some sort of a quantity which would be the change in the potential energy. And you can kind of see the way you do this, it's pretty simple. But what you're going to do is you're going to calculate the potential energy, the K Q1 Q2 divided by R initial, and then you will subtract, I'm sorry, you will subtract that amount of energy, take the difference between that and the K Q1 Q2 over R final. And that's how you get a difference between the electric potential energies between two points. That's often of interest because let's say you release a particle at one location and you want to know its speed as it speeds through another location. You need to find not its potential energy, but the difference in the potential energy between those two locations. Now, we can add one more complication to this. 
as we do when we shift down below by adding another particle into the mix. So in the situation down below, I've added, for instance, let's say a negative charge to the mix, the original particles are there. And I can ask, what is the, um, let's see, the electric potential uh, would be total. How can I find this total electric potential energy of this system right here? Well, you can kind of see here that this is going to be a little bit more complicated because whereas we said that the initial electric potential energy was the, the force, uh, the work required to move these two positive charges. Again, let's go back to our little labeling here. I think we said this is one, this is two, and this is three. We want to, first of all, we need to put the two positive charges, one and one, we need to get them this radius away. In other words, the radius between one and two. Um, but when we add this other particle, you, you realize, we also need to pull in the system so that two becomes this far away from three. In other words, I have this R radius between particles two and three. And similar, if I wanted to put this system together, I would also have to do some work of some sort, bringing these two charges together, right? Uh, bringing them to a, some kind of a um, radius, in this case, uh, a radius, let's say, of one to three. And then we might ask ourselves the question then, uh, getting back to our equation, what's the total amount of energy or the total amount of work required to put this system together? Well, it's going to be the combination of all these. And you've got to be careful with the labeling here because it gets a little bit complicated. In fact, I'm going to zoom in even a little bit more so I have room to write. But it's going to look a little something like this. I'm going to, I need the, the energy to put the first two particles together, and that's the KQ1, Q2 over the radius between 1 and 2. And then I'm going to add the uh, electric potential energy to put charge 2 and charge 3 together at a distance between 2 and 3. And then I would have to add to this the energy required to put uh, charge number 1 and charge number 3 together divided by the radius between 1 and 3. So that would be the total amount of energy to assemble a system. Now the other complication associated with this by bringing in a negative charge here is remember when you're doing potential energy and electric potential, the charge basically gets reflected in these numbers. So this number and this number would both be negative numbers. Now that makes sense, right? Because since this is the work done to assemble the system, the negative charge is gonna fall towards these positive charges anyway. So it's actually losing electric potential energy as it gets closer and closer and closer to these particles. Uh, so it makes sense that they would have a negative term. So what you do is you add up the energy required to put each of the particles into place and account for the signs, positive or negative, for each of the charges to be able to come up with the electric potential total for the entire system. Okay, finally we get to the concept of electric potential V. Now, electric potential V, um, remember, for a point, for a positive charge, we said that the space around a positive charge is at a higher electric potential. So what we could think of is we could think of rings in a sense. They would almost be like lines on a map called topography that would show that this point right here is at a high point, almost a hill in the electric potential V, higher and higher. The electric potential V for a positive charge is zero at infinity and grows higher and higher. And with electric potential questions, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the question, well, what is the electric potential V at a certain point in space, somewhere out there in the terrain? And the way we calculate that value is we know that uh, the electric potential uh, is our value for V is equal to the electric potential energy per unit charge. Now we have a relationship for point charges of the electric potential energy, something like this. So you can kind of see if I take this equation and substitute it, uh, I get the electric per unit, electric energy per unit charge divided by the charge, and I get my final relationship that looks like this. It's equal to K 
times the charge that is producing the electric potential divided by the radius, where in this case the radius is a point in space here, uh, the distance between that point and space and the center of my charge. That gives me my electric potential. Now just like an electric potential energy, a lot of times in the problems you're interested in a potential difference, like some kind of a delta V, let's say between two points, let's say I designate another point uh, over here uh, as a, uh, let's say a point Q, something like that. And what you do for these, this equation, of course, is what you do is you're uh, interested in difference. So you're going to find the V at P and take the difference between that and the V at Q, noting that the two different radiuses. Now, important thing to keep in mind with electric potential is this radial radius is a distance to the center, notice. So even though I've drawn these two particles as not being along the same line, the only thing that determines their electric potential is how far away they are from the central charge. In other words, uh, let's say I can move in this direction. Let's say from P, if I were to move in this direction over here to this new spot here, I would have not changed electric potential at all if I didn't change my R. And that's what we're saying that these lines that are kind of like the topography around a hill, like line, they're really like lines of equal altitude. In this case, they're lines of equal electric potential voltage. In other words, a V. We call those lines equipotential lines, which should make sense. Okay, just finishing up, we'd like to make this a little more complicated and add another uh, charge here. So we could say now in this condition right here, I'd I've got some sort of a point P here in space, and I would like to know the total e uh, electric potential V at that location in space. And you can kind of see here that uh, at this location in space, there's a certain electric potential because of the positive charge, and that's going to be a positive electric potential. And there's a certain, uh, we'll call this uh, radius 1, particle 1, particle 2. And there's a certain electric potential at that location because of our negatively charged particle 2. And that we'll call that radius 2. And you can kind of see here that I would be able to add these two electric potentials to get a total electric potential at point P. The way your equation sheet shows adding those electric potentials is with this equation where it says V is equal to the sum of the K, Q over R's. That is the way this equation is actually written on the equation sheet. And so you can kind of see here that you take the arithmetic sum. Now positively charged particles will cause positive electric potentials. Negative electric charges we'll call negative electric potentials. So you're going to add these either positive or negative until you come up with some total electric potential at a particular location in space. Now I want to back out here to show the whole uh, kind of show the whole screen here. And I want to do one more box because I forgot to do it before this equation right here for the electric potential energy. And now you have all of the relationships for electric force field, electric potential energy and electric potential, both for uniform fields and point charges with the actual equations that you're given boxed. The other information on the slide is information that you have to understand or be able to develop on your own in the course of working problems. Best luck on the test.